Hi everyone, and welcome to the Asus ROG Strix X370. Yes, that is Ryzen ITX motherboard review. So finally, we are going to be taking a look at the uh, Asus Ryzen ITX board. And it does seem like we've been waiting for ages, but they say it's because they've designed it from the ground up. And rather than kind of like, I know you'd think that they would do that anyway, but let's face it, it's quite easy for them to have, you know, kind of adapted older designs. But really for me, and it's something we will be focusing on today, and I will give you a closer look at the board, but this heatsink is going to be the thing that could make or break the board. And I'm not giving it an easy life either. That's an 1800X that we will be doing our testing on today because that's how I test all of the boards. So I'm not gonna be giving it an easy life. Okay, so here's a look at the board itself. I've left the memory in there, um, but essentially CPU in the middle, doesn't really take a lot to work that out, does it? We've got three um, fan headers at the top. Got a CPU fan, uh, a first uh, chassis fan, chassis fan, and then your AI pump header. You've got two RGB connectors at the top. The one on the left is for the addressable RGBs. The one on the right is the normal four pin. Over here, you can see I've got this random switch attached, uh, but here is where your front panel uh, switches and LEDs would connect. I've just got this switch on here for it, so it's easier for me to turn off and on. Got a couple of vertical SATAs here and another couple of vertical SATAs down here. USB 2 um, external here and USB 3 down at the bottom. PCI Express, don't really need to tell you about that. The phase is up the side, one, two, three, four, five, six up the side. Then this is actually the M.2 port and your daughter board for the audio. So it does both and you can pop the little, um, the heat sink off. This actually lights up as well though. It's actually quite a cool and funky design. It's actually fairly well laid out as well. We've got the eight pin at the uh, top up here and the 24 pin down the side, not in some silly spaces like they can be with some of the other manufacturers. And you get to see the size of the heat sink at the back, which we are going to be doing extensive testing on. And the only thing that I would say is that I would have liked to have had maybe another couple of USBs on the back here, but you do still get all your wireless and everything built in. It ticks, you know, pretty much all of the boxes for an ITX board. Well, now on to the uh, part of the testing that I was actually most interested in, and if I'm honest, worried about as well. Now, uh, with Ryzen and at Ryzen and specifically the ITX boards, I've not really had what I would call a lot of luck with them because Ryzen can draw quite a bit of power, especially when you manually overclock and you know fix the volts. VRMs can get quite hot. And the problem with ITX boards is you've just not got a lot of real estate there to be able to put big heat sinks and lots of power phases. I did review the ITX Gigabyte board a little while ago and I actually come to the conclusion that without kind of like a direct downdraft air cooler blowing over the what was quite a tiny heat sink on the board, I just wouldn't really have bought it for overclocking unless you were overclocking one of the small four core processors. I didn't particularly feel comfortable with the six or the eights, six or eight core processors. So with the, the Asus board, I was, it was something I straight away wanted to find out about. Now, when we look for VRM temperatures, we rely on hardware info, and hardware info normally shows us the VRM uh, probe that a lot of the other boards, sorry, a lot of the other programs sometimes kind of miss out and don't show at all. So when I got the board and I had a look at it with hardware info, I couldn't see anything there referring to uh, VRM temps. There was just one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, so I said to Asus, which one of these is, you know, which one of these is that um, probe? And they were like, there isn't a VRM probe on the board. I was like, what? What do you mean there's not a VRM probe on the board? With a tiny board like this, this is one where we want more um, inbuilt probes. And they were like, nope, there just isn't one there. 
Now, initially, I have to admit that sent alarm bells off with me because I was like, why, what are they trying to hide? What's, you know, kind of going on? Then they said, oh, we don't put them on all of the boards, whereas, well, let's face it, every single one of the X299 boards got them. So, and they're like, it's, they're not always that accurate. Well, they might not be like, you know, within a degree perfect accurate, because if you don't know, the, the, the probe actually sits in between the VRMs. It's not a temperature taken from an actual VRM. So really what the probe is doing is it's picking up the temperature on the PCB in between the actual VRMs themselves. And depending on, you know, how good the heat sink works depends on, but let's face it, they're all like that. So I think their not very accurate kind of statement is a little bit kind of like, well, they never have been, but you put them on all the other boards. So then what I had to do is I ended up and I'll show you with this. Now, don't worry, it's not just been tested like this, but this here today, what I'm showing you on the video is our worst case scenario. We are utterly passive. I've even run uh, an AIO. Now, uh, uh, in the other testing that I've did, which I will share with you in a bit, we did have it in a case and we've I've tested it with both uh, a normal tower air cooler and I've also tested it with a downdraft air cooler as well. So we've done all three and we've done this with a four gigahertz, 1.4 volt overclock. And we've done this with um, literally stock out the box, made no changes whatsoever, just to give ourselves a bit of balance. So what I've got here is I've got a thermal probe and you can see it's gone up and it's right underneath the, uh, the heat sink itself. This is literally the hottest I've been able to get it. And the way that I can then um, back the temperatures up is I can get my infrared probe. You've just got to get it to roughly the right spot. Um, and we've got 85 here. Now what you need to remember is this probe is further up. Um, and you, have to, you do have to get it because you can move it around and you can find hotter parts on the board and not so hot parts on the board. And what I normally do is then I then tally it up uh, and I do a heat sink test as well. Now we know the heat sink test should be lower than our um, test from underneath the heat sink. So we've got 85 here at the moment. We would have been looking at kind of around the 80s on the heat sink, 78, 79. So with the graph up, it was actually a little better than I thought. Now the, the very big bar that you can see would have been the totally, totally passive setup that I told you about before. Some ITX cases can have minimal airflow. The other thing that you need to think about is with AIOs as well, um, depending on the orientation with them, you might not get a lot of uh, airflow over the heat sink itself. So it's really gonna depend on your case. So when I was running my AIO, it was absolutely nowhere near the, uh, the heat sink itself. It was giving it no benefit. The only good thing about the, um, the AIO was, really, I'm, it meant that I didn't have the airflow around it, although it would have been slightly lower temperatures in an air cooler. With an air cooler, you obviously, you are going to get that uh, through, uh, that passing of air. And that's what made the difference with the other sections on the graph. The red box, that would have been the number that we got with a normal um, air cooler with a 120 millimeter fan in the back of the case and a 120 millimeter fan in the roof, just so that you've got some reasonable airflow. The even smaller box, that would have been with a straight downdraft Noctua L-type cooler blowing over the top. And the thing I cannot stress enough is annoyingly, even just a little bit of airflow somewhere near the heat sink, and by that I mean like you need the, the like an air cooler blowing over it, just in the back of the case and nothing else didn't seem to make a great deal of difference, like a few degrees. But have an air cooler in there with it, you know, with a bit of air blowing over the top of it, and the temperatures actually did fall really quickly. So that's definitely something for you to keep in mind if you're gonna be like specking your own sort of uh, kit and rig with this. But the thing that you do need to keep in mind here is an absolute worst case scenario with no airflow around whatsoever and an overclocked 1800X. We didn't actually even get anywhere near the point of thermal throttling. 
which with all due respect with the Gigabyte boards, you were looking at like five to 10 minutes before that was overheating and massively throttling down. I have left this for hours in the past like this. And yes, you wouldn't want to be touching the heat sink with your fingers. It might end up taking the, like the, the, the fingerprint off the end of your finger, but we experienced no thermal throttling. And as you've seen with um, our thermal probe, we were getting around the 85 degree mark from this thermal probe. There was places underneath the heatsink where if I got it just right, I think I was probably picking up a VRM itself. I could see about um, 95 degrees from the, the infrared. But if you take it from the PCB anywhere around the actual uh, heatsink itself, so not actually flicking onto the electrical components, it was always within a few degrees of the that thermal probe and that's probably the best that we can do because if you do get a sudden spike like i said you probably are looking at the bottom very bottom of one of the vrms and you don't ever get to see a straight vrm temperature um, and uh, when you do put the thermal probes in there you don't want them on top of the vrm because that would have been you know that's best way I can put it is that's actually unfair when you think that the th if you, there was a thermal probe built into this, it wouldn't be on top of the VRM. You always need to take it from the PCB because if you've got your motherboard at home and yours has got a VRM thing, that will be on the PCB itself. So that's why we don't put them directly on top of the VRMs. Although it would be a nice number to know, but if you're, um, let's for argument's sake, if we know that there's a 105 degrees throttling limit with a motherboard, what that's actually probably going to mean is that the, the VRM itself is probably going to be like 120 or 125 degrees by the time it gets to that point because the 105 degree limit was set for the PCB, not the VRM itself. So there's some complicated sides to it and it is stuff that you have to keep in mind before people go, oh, you should have put it on top of the VRM. And, it would just make it look worse than if you were to go and look at other reviews where they've used software and stuff like that, it would look a lot worse. So what I've actually done is I've tried to mimic what there would have been if Asus had bothered to put a uh, probe on there in the first place. Anyway, so we abused it. We tested the air cooling in many different ways or tested the cooling, including the VRMs in many different ways, just to try and cover all the bases for you. When it does come to performance though, that four gigahertz overclock on the CPU did help. Uh, and I did manage to get 4.1 gigahertz for a screenshot, but it, it was just that little bit too shaky um, to be able to get to pass some of the longer runs. Um, we weren't getting any throttling, we weren't getting any heat issues with the VRMs or anything like that. I think it was just, the board just wasn't able to quite grab hold of that last little bit. Not many of the big, even ATX boards did though, to be fair. So when we put it in the graph, it still scored very, very well. Now Blender, this is quite a new one, in case you're wondering why they're all Asus ones on there. It's just the most recent ones that I've done. On to X265 though, and you can see that it has, um, uh, we've got a lot more results in there, and it does mean that we've got a lot more balance in there as well but it was within the top couple on that. Now the optimizations with the BIOS and the GIS code and everything like that has helped and it, we did get 3200 megahertz on this, absolutely dead easy. And we could even get 3333 running, but the scores, they, 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 they could be a bit kind of shaky. So we dropped back to 3200, it was really nice, really good um, decent temperatures, uh, sorry, good results across the board as well, which just affirms the fact that I think when it comes to Ryzen, 3200 really is the sweet spot. Uh, and then gaming, it actually did very, very well as well. Moving on to the conclusion. Um, my overwhelming feeling about the, uh, the temperatures and stuff on the board is I think they've done quite a good job. The board was designed from the ground up, which is why it's a bit late. Uh, and I think they've done uh, a better job than I was expecting. I, I didn't think that I was going to be getting um, like throttle level temperatures on this, but I thought being able to run it passively and all that sort of stuff, and literally, you know, this was a worst case scenario. I thought I would have seen sort of 95 to 100 degrees on the, the VRMs where I had the probe, and I didn't. And I think the fact that I didn't does go to show that they have put a lot of effort in. 
I don't like the fact that they left the probe off though, because with something like this, I think it's something you'd want to keep an eye on. And it initially made me think that they were trying to hide something, which is why I went to such great levels to try and, let's face it, trip it up and find out what was going on. So Asus, don't start taking stuff off. Add it on like you used to in the old days. I know it's a, um, it's a, a, you know, it's a tiny little ITX board, but we were picking up six other different thermal probes on the board. So why didn't you just take all of those off as well? No, you took the one off that was actually going to show a bit of heat. And it's sad that I had to go to such great levels to try and show that it wasn't actually that bad in the first place. So. I think it's a bit of a confusing one and it's yet again another time that they do really deserve a bit of a slap and a kick in the nuts and whoever decided, let's not put the thermal probe on, yeah you can send him off to the naughty step for a couple of weeks, I don't know, send him down to work on the assembly line or something like that because I don't, 